All right, I think that uh, we should start. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you, Sheila. Uh, I would like, um, first of all, again, welcome to everybody. Whoever is interested in Tfila in prayer. And um, I concluded that long Psalm uh, Ashrei 145. And uh, I did touch on uh, 146. I just want to make one or two short comments about 145 because really there is no end to it. Now, um, first of all, as I told you, um, the Ashrei, happy are those who dwell in the house of the Lord. That is, uh, as I mentioned, it, was, it's, it goes every line alphabetically. And... Uh, some of our sages say that any prayer that goes alphabetically is on a higher level in terms of uh, praising God. Shevach Gadol, it's a big a praise. And therefore, we are blessing constantly. Brachamat Medet, constantly we praise God because we thank him basically. Number one. Number two, all the uh, Psalms that are with, alf with which uh, are constructed alphabetically, it has a special, special blessing. Because in the final analysis, according to many other sages, it reflects our faith, our emunah, in God who controls the world and in God who provides us with a sustenance. These were a couple of things. Malmchutcha, your kingdom is forever. It says the Ibn Ezra that every kingdom will eventually finish, but God's kingdom is forever and ever. And another interesting thing I found by Rabbi David uh, Kimchi, by Rabbi David Kimchi, by the Radak, we said, Lechol, Karov Hashem, God is close to all those, Lechol Asher Yikra'uhu Be'emet, He is close to all those who seek God, calls, calls upon God, Be'emet, with truth. Says the Radak something very, very deep, to my opinion. It is bemi shepiv velibo shavim. If it's a person, his or her mouth and heart are equal, they think and say the same, then God is close to them. In other words, any other a movement which is not clear in terms of the equality between the mouth and the heart has its problem. <laughs> now, Retzon Yereavia say God will do the, will, will answer the uh, will or the request or the prayer of those who are uh, religious towards him. Somewhere else there is a saying of some of our sages Tzadik gozer ve'akadosh baruch hu mekayem. This I figured out myself. A righteous person uh, makes a ruling or likes to uh, towards a friend. And if he does that, that righteous person, akadosh baruch hu mekayem, God fulfills. In other words, uh, that is really the reason why many, many people go to a righteous person, or go to a righteous person and ask him, please be bless us, and please you make the demand to God. Because in the final analysis, you will make the demand to God, and God will have to fulfill it. 
All right. Now, I would like to move now to Psalm 146. I actually spoke about it. Again, anybody who uses the word ashray, anybody who uses uh, ashray in his prayer gets a special reward. And that's very, very important. Then, whilst I am alive, a human being cannot save, well, sometimes the body cannot save another human being because he, 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 he cannot bring him to a Yeshua, to a salvation. It is actually only God who brings the salvation. Now, um, God, according to Rashi, always a shomer emet leolam. God keeps the truth forever, says one of the um, interpreters, that it is until the end of all the generations, or to a lot of generations, because God fulfills and guards the truthfulness of his promise. In other words, the promise of God is the promise of truth, and that encompasses everything in the life of the human beings. Now, I wanted, um, I mentioned last week about uh, people who are Gerim, who, are, uh, who come from another uh, nation and um, uh, orphans and widows that God takes care of them. And that's, that's there again, it's very, very important. Now, um, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hashem Bechayai. I praise God in the time of my life. Azamrale Elokai Beodi. I will sing for God Beodi. And I've explained a few times. Odd forever. Ad, odd is always the same. And then we say, Al Tiftechu bin Divim. Do not rely on uh, uh, rich and Nadevim. well Nedivim Nadiv is somebody who gives and uh, as I mentioned Rothschild was a Nadiv Hayadua the well known um, uh, a, a person who gave and uh, but there are some philanthropists yeah, and some of them are Takifim they are very very strong because again, in the final in the final analysis, we cannot rely on somebody that who he himself depends on other people and other things. So anybody who does not depend on God during the process of trying to help his or her friends, he cannot be the basis, the firm basis. Uh, for uh, to believe in God. Then we have the word um, Ador Shem Matir Asurim. People who are in jail, God will eventually rescue him or her out. And um, Pokeach Ivrim, that means, what do I mean? He opens uh, people who are blind. It means really that he opens the eyes of the blind. The word, he doesn't say pokeach einei ivrim, but he's pokeach ivrim, he opens the eyes of the blind. Hashem zokef kefufim, I mentioned that those who are bending, he will raise them, and God loves the righteous. 
and and um, God will always give strength to those who who need it, and will cause those who do not uh, believe in Him to fall. Now uh, I already spoke about. I want to move a little bit uh, to Psalm 147, Perek Kuf Mem Hey. And here is something extremely, extremely interesting. The first verse, we have Alleluia, Kitov, Zamra Eloheinu, uh, praise the God because we, he sings to us and we sing to him. Kinaim Navateila. It is beautiful, it's great, it's pleasant to sing for him and it's be beautiful that we praise him. All right, now we have a verse which I would like to discuss for a couple of minutes. Bonei Yerushalayim Hashem, God builds Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. What does it mean he builds Jerusalem? Probably, of course, it means that God eventually builds the temple. Then the verse says, Nidchei Yisrael Yechanes. He will bring all those who are dispersed all over the world, the Israelites who are dispersed all over the world, he'll bring them together and there will be the final ingathering of Jews in Jerusalem. My question is follows, is the following. What should really be before? According to the verse, God will build Jerusalem and we have the belief that the third temple will not have to be built by human beings, kings, others, but it will come as fire when God will send it to the earth. So first says the psalmist, First, God will build Yerushalayim and then will be the ingathering. My question is, very often I take the subject in the verse and I turn it around. Uh, could we say, first God will bring all the Jews to Eretz Israel, and then Bonei Yerushalayim, and then he will build Yerushalayim. There is an opinion among some of our um, sages and of some of our uh, more uh, newer uh, interpreters of the Bible that perhaps first let's bring the Jews to Eretz Israel and then build Yerushalayim. Let us look for one second as to what is happening today. Today, in our time since the establishment of the State of Israel, first, we, there has been the ingathering of all the Jews from all over the world, or at least many of them. Today, Israel has the most, the, the biggest number of Jews in Eretz Israel. Could it be that it is more Bonei Israel first to bring the in gatherings and then build the Yerushalayim? Perhaps, because as I mentioned, sometimes I play around with the verse one way or the other because it's the same thing. What, and since we are experiencing today the in gathering perhaps the turning of the verse is appropriate. On the other hand, I know that many, many rabbis will disagree and they will say, no, we have to go by the, uh, by the verse, the way it says. And I, I, I go along with it because there are still so many millions of Jews all over the world who have not come yet to Eretz Israel. What the verse means here 
is Nidhei Israel. There are those who are dispersed. And there are a lot of Jews, millions of them dispersed. Therefore, we have to look forward to the building of the temple. And then all the Jews from all over the world will come. And I think there is a lot to think about um, and it's very interesting. I would like to jump to um, verse 14 in the same Psalm, 147. Psalm 14 says the following, a similar question, but first let me explain. Hasam gvulech shalom. All the borders of Eretz Israel will enjoy shalom, will enjoy peace. And then he says, Chelev chitim yasbiech. Then the bread and the milk will be available to you for your satisfaction. In other words, what comes first? According to the verse, first we have to make sure that the land of Israel, all its border, all around, south, east, and north, well, west is the sea, of course. So first is peace, and then the economy. Somebody asks, should it perhaps be the other way around? Let's make sure that the economy is strong, therefore the country is strong, and then that will bring to peace. It's something that is worth thinking about, but there again, is peace first and then economy, or economy first and then peace? Because when they see and the fact that we are experiencing today peace with four uh, countries plus um, Egypt and Jordan. So maybe, and, and why are they friends with Israel? Why have they signed peace treaties with Israel? Because Israel is strong. Not, let's not talk about army now. Of course, the army is the best in the Middle East. Maybe even in the world, who knows? I'm not an expert on army, although I'm an officer in the Israeli army. But it is very, very interesting. What will come first? Uh, some of them say, Asam Gvulech, the, the border. Is it the border of the land? Or is it the border of the city of Jerusalem? It doesn't say Asam Gvulech Jerusalem Shalom, but we have a lot of prophecies, and I will go back quickly to analyze them. Jerusalem is uh, said and sung for many, many times. So, but let's think. First is the border either of the country or the city of Jerusalem, and then the economy. Now let's go back. Oh, I have something else. All right, let, let me uh, come. This psalm is a psalm of praise. It is very, very beautiful. The language is gorgeous. The Hebrew is so gorgeous. And what is special about it, that it is not a permanent. What it means really, it jumps from one subject to another. In other words, the, the Samis wanted to, to put together as much as possible in terms of faith in God and faith in the land and the surrounding of the land in terms of economy, peace, and so on and so forth. So that's something very, very uh, important. And then we say, 
הרופא לשבור הלב היא גיבס מדיסן to those who, whose hearts are broken and מכבש לעצבותם. He gives them medications for those who are sad. When I composed at the beginning of the pandemic, the Misha Berach for the people who got the corona, I used the words, Harofeli Shvurei Lev Umechabesh Leatzvotam. He puts bandage, so to speak, on their wounds. Of course, this is spiritually speaking, and God helps them, assists them with their soul. In other words, we are talking about body problems, and we are talking about psychological problems. Now, the verse after that, Mone mispar la kochavim. He, what does he do? God comes down and takes care with the smallest of the smallest because the stars are really small. And since they are small, then God takes care of them. Therefore, he takes care of the human beings and particularly the Jews who are really small compared to God. And God, but God can count how many uh, um, stars and therefore how many people. And he gave names to every star. When we, gave, when we give names to a newly born boy or girl, when we do that, it is really by inspiration from God. So the human being, being so many like the sand and like the stars, as God promised Abraham in his covenant with him, that means that every name, or every star and every human being gets the name with God's blessing. And then we say, Gadol Adonainu Noverav Koach. Um, God is very strong. Litvunato ein mispar. There, uh, God uh, knows, there is no count. I mean, everybody is with him, and, but God knows how to count them. Now we are on verse um, six something similar to what we had in the previous. Meoded anavim Hashem. God encourages whom? People who are humble. He encourages them. Encourages them. Mashpil reshaim adai aretz. But the wicked, he pulls down all the way to the sand. And therefore, we as the human beings, as the Jews who believe in God, what do we do when God takes care of us? And nu, here is the same lettering, ein, nun, vav. Praise, answer God, enula, Hashem betoda. Praise God, answer him with thanks. But Ein nun vav is like we had before. Ein yud nun vav. A, a, the same thing. In other words, we a, a, anavim with a vav means that we are humble. And as humble people, we talk to God. It's the same word. The strength. Says, say some of our sages, the strength of our prayer and praising God comes from the fact that we are humble. And how do we answer God? Zamru lelokeinu bechinor. 
sing to God accompanied by the violin. Well, violin today is really not uh, what it used to be. There is an argument about the scholars, whether it is the harp where you can create a chords harmony because the violin only four strings plays only one line of melody. It can join the human being by offering a second voice, but that's not sufficient. So those who say that the kinor is the, the harp, let it be that, that way. And we praise God in the, in, with the kinor, with the violin or the harp. Now, here is some more, another verse, verse eight. Amechase shamayim be'avim, God um, covers sometimes the heaven with um, clouds. Amechin la'aretz matar, he prepares um, um, the rain. And by doing that, Matzmiach Harim Chatzir. He, um, the mountains will bring us all growth of, 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 of something that goes that we can bake for a bread. And this is really the most important. Grain. Important, the grain. The grain. Now, in, but it's not only to the human being. The bread goes also to the, to the animal. Even those who fly, the birds who, who, who say, crow, crow, crow. And in Hebrew, we say, yikrow. Here is a word in Hebrew, which is taken from nature. From the nature of those, uh, uh, crows. the crows, the crows. Ye crow, they say crow, 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 and and they are called in Hebrew orev with an ayin, and they are the one who call God ye crow, korimlo, and it comes from the nature. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Here is one example where the Hebrew language stems to a large extent from nature. Now we have here lobby gvurata susirpats. God does not want, is not satisfied with a human being that depends and relies on the strength of the horse and the strength of his body. Love is okay, Haish Yirze. And God will not accept the um, body strength of the human being. Who does want go? Want? Hashem et yereav. He wants those who fear him. People who do not have strength, do not have koach, but those who cry to God, pray to God for his mercy. And what happens now? We said, um, I'd like to go back for a minute to the beginning. We sing, it's good that we sing to God. We thank you, God. That you, that you merited us to be those who sing and praise you. This is a most beautiful thing. And now coming back to verse Yud Bet 12. Shabchi Yerushalayim et Hashem, Hallelujah Elokaich Zion. Praise Yerushalayim, praise God. Yerushalayim, you are the subject. Praise God. Tion, hallelujah, lokaich. I'm turning now the words as I suggested before, but the meaning is exactly the same. Zion, 
praise uh, Hashem. Why, why do we do that? Because Hashem, God, has a special feelings to his city and to his temple in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So the idea of praising God, singing to him, praying to him, the final analysis is because we accept that God has special feelings to his city and to his temple. And therefore, those who opt to live in Jerusalem, they should be blessed. Uh, Beatrice and I pray all the time that one day we'll, we'll come to uh, enough uh, possibilities to live in Jerusalem. Very expensive real estate. Now, why do we want Jerusalem? God strengths the, 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 the entrances, the gates of Jerusalem. What for? Why? A, a God cannot take it? No, that it should not, God forbid, come in, in a way that the, uh, that the enemies will attempt to open the gates of Jerusalem. What it really means that he gives Jerusalem protection against the enemies and berach banaich bekirbech. By doing that, by protecting the gates of Jerusalem, he already begins to bless the people who are in Jerusalem. Now, about the, about the uh, borders, I already spoke. I would like only to quote to you something what uh, Rabbi Samson Reifel Hirsch in uh, Frankfurt, I mean, in Germany, what he said. This psalm brings the Jewish people in the diaspora the knowledge, the encouraging knowledge, the happy knowledge that the Jewish people and the human being have good relations with God. Because the people are always relying in the future, which is run by God. Not only, says Rabbi Hirsch, to a single person who is suffering, but the wounds of the nation. The nation, the Jewish nation that went to diaspora, that causes wounds that we haven't been, we ha it hasn't come to a, an end. So uh, it is not only the human being that God gives a, a refuah, gives a health and medicine, but the entire suffering of the human being. Therefore, later, the free recognition and the praise that God is the commander in chief, so to speak, and the relationship between all the inhabitants of the world and their development, it will be built on the basis of truth and musariyut and morality and justice. In other words, the final analysis, Jerusalem, the border, the healing from wounds will bring about truth, truth, morality, and justice. I think this is a beautiful uh, explanation that I found. Uh, some of them are from my late friend, uh, uh, Rabbi uh, Steinsalz. I want to continue, I haven't concluded it, and then I have some more things to say about the psalm. God sends his word 
and whatever he says will fly, will run like a, a, a very fast. The snow will be like wool that could be dispers dispersed all over. When it is icy, then it is icy. God say, sends his word and it will it and it it's like the ice that eventually becomes water. And therefore the spirit of the people will grow up. Why? Because the human beings are getting water. Yashev Rucho, he will bring back the spirit of the human being and because the water is coming. And the water comes from whom? From God. Then suddenly we are moving, and I mentioned at the beginning, there are many uh, themes to this psalm. Magid Dvarav Yaakov, he gives, um, uh, God tells the Jewish people his words, which is the Torah, Chukav Umishpatav, his laws and justice he gave to Israel. In other words, we have here the Torah, the Bichtav, the Torah Shebealpe, the 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 Torah that came with the Ten Commandments, and after that the Mishnayot and the Talmud, and and all the development of Jewish law. So Dvar Davar Yaakov, always it's Yaakov because Yaakov was the one who said that he was going to Aram to see his father-in-law, but. He said, this is the place where God's house will be. So it's, God says his words to Jacob and the laws and the justice to the Israelites. He is not giving every human being the laws unless they are willing to observe them. Because all the laws that God gives, Bal Yedaum, they will not do it. This is a special gift from God to the Jewish people by itself. And again, how does it conclude? Hallelujah. As I mentioned to you, all the hallelujahs, the six <coughs> of them, begin and end with hallelujah. Now, um, I wanted to um, mention just another couple of um, comments about these Psalms. Uh, when I said that he gives the animal the food in the mountains, because sometimes in the mountains they cannot find the, the food. The food can be found on the earth, the normal earth. Then uh, you cannot rely on uh, another human being, even if he's very strong, because you cannot run so fast sometimes away from the, from the enemies. God wants those who, are, who fear or revere, you know, we have two explanations to that. Revere and Am Yachalim, they, they want him, and praise Yerushalayim. I said before, Velitvunato ain mispar. God's cleverness in doing it, there is no measure. This was according to the Radak, Rabbi David Kimchi. But there is another interpreter, the Sforno who says, he adds, and it, it's clever. He says, Ein mi There is nobody who can really and completely tell the greatness of the cleverness of God. And, and so um, I, all the other things I mentioned, 
Sometimes, as I said, the crowd cannot they get the food which they want. God enables them to get it. The crow. The crow, sorry. God does not want the strength of the horse and the human being, only those who fear God or revere God. And Shabhi Yerushalayim, praise Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, praise God. I found a, an explanation by the Ibn Ezra that it is continuation to what is going to be in the future, that Yerushalayim will be a strong city. And this is a continuation to what Hashem, God wants his, those who fear. And God also wants Yerushalayim to be safe and rely on him. Therefore, he says, Shabhi, praise Yerushalayim, which means according to the Radak, Rabbi David Kimchi, who will praise Yerushalayim? Who? Yerushalayim itself? Says the Radak, no, those who dwell in Yerushalayim. So we have all kinds of interpretations. All are very, uh, uh, very, very uh, clever. Now, um, he says, Ki chizak he strength, strengthens the, the gates of Yerushalayim so that they should be firmly closed or locked. But the idea of the Alshech, another great sage, the Alshech says that the idea is not that Yerushalayim should be closed on, on, on locks, because there is a pasuk in the book of Isaiah. Pitchu she'araich tamid yomam v'layla lo yisageru. Yerushalayim, your gates will be opened always, day and night lo yisageru. Day and night, they will never be locked. The idea is, again, another way of expressing faith. Strong, we know that God will take care of us. Because there is another uh, prophecy that Yerushalayim is surrounded with a wall of fire. And the wall of fire, says the al Sheikh, will be like the locks that strangers who do not uh, care about God will not be able to get in. Uh, it's really very, very uh, beautiful. Now, I would like to conclude um, The fact I said that lo asarenu mishpatim bal yedaum kukavu mishpatav we will know all the laws and all the, the, the entire Torah. Despite the fact they say mishpatim bal yedaum they may not know all the law. One of the commentators says they will not know the laws. Nevertheless. Praise the Lord. Nevertheless, praise the word, the Lord. And by praising the Lord, how does it conclude? Hallelujah. So this is Psalm 147. Kuf Mem Zain. I think it's just, just, just absolutely mind-boggling. There is so much to learn from it. I, I never look at the translation to English. I only look with all to all the interpreters that I have in my library of the uh, Siddur. I'd like just to open for the next couple of minutes. I would like to open 
סתם 148, Now, what are we talking about here? This is a mizmor. This is a psalm of, according to the Ibn Ezra, who was also a poet and was a, 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 a man who interpreted the Torah. This mizmor, this psalm of praise is a very important one. It is almost like an anthem. And, and says the Ibn Ezra, Vyeshbo Sodot Amukim. There are very, very deep secrets in it. But basically, it calls upon the human beings to praise God. This uh, Mizmor, this Psalm 148, Kuf Mem is really divided into two parts. First, um, approaching the human beings to, no, first of all, approaching those who are up in heaven, the angels, the stars, the sun, the moon, Yetzurei Mala, those who are above, praise God, and also a similar approach to the human beings on earth. In other words, what we are talking here that we want, and I will go into details, we'll see about the, about the, um, about the Malachim, about the um, angels. angels and the whole military, so to speak, that God has around him. But it, the, the idea is that to praise God has the whole universe has to do that. And that, remember, came before they discovered we knew that there was a sun and moon and stars, but nobody has ever reached them. So when we say on Saturday night after Rosh Chodesh, the prayer to the moon, Rav Goren, who was the chief rabbi of the army and then chief rabbi of Israel, who's one of his soldiers, I was, as the cantor of the army, Rav Goren changed the text. Because when we say Kiddush Levana, sanctification of the moon, we say the same as we cannot touch you, the moon, so my enemies, our enemies will not be able to touch us. Rav Goren changed it to another, uh, in other words, Keshem Shani Nogea Bach, as I touch you, because human beings have been already to the moon, not by the thousands, but they've been, the same as I am touching the moon, so will I be able to touch the enemies and they will not be able to touch me and harm me, God forbid. That was Rav Goren when he did that. And I remember, I'll never forget uh, that I wrote him a long letter, how important it is. But as usual, unfortunately, um, he was a man who already was a man of the future. He understood the future. He knew it will come. He was a sort of a prophet. And today, nobody would dare to use it. He also changed the prayer for Tisha B'Av. When we'll get to it, I will speak about it. But being as it may, uh, the idea is that Mishpatim Bal Yedaum, those human beings who do not know the law, the laws of God, will be able to praise him. Hallelujah. And the 
148 strengthens this because he talks about the nature, he talks about the up, praise him high, this, the um, Malachim, the angels, his army, the sun, the moon, the, um, those who bring us light, the, uh, um, the um, stars that bring us light, the Shmei HaShamayim, these are the high um, heaven. In other words, King David already knew that there is something above the Shamayim that we see. And, but I will talk more in details in Yerz Hashem, with God's help, uh, next week. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful psalm. And uh, yes, I would like to dwell with it. And it should be nice, yeah. Okay, we'll go to after that to, to one, uh, 149. And the symphonic psalm, 150 all the instruments in the holy temple and we'll talk about it i will touch a little bit in the talmud in masechet sukkah in the tractate of sukkah and the last the the last part of it talks about the music in the temple but we have time we'll talk about it most likely maybe next week or the week after that well, the week after that, I don't know yet, but I'll let you know, because I may not be able to make it. We'll see. Um, anyway, I want to wish you all a Shabbat Shalom, or again, Beatrice and I. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to you and Beatrice, yes.